Welcome, this is Microbiology Laboratory. I'm Kevin Tokoff, and in this video we're going to discuss some of the things we talked about for exercise one, which is really just microbiology, the big picture. All right, so first of all, let's go over some of the big concepts and then a little bit on safety that we covered in class today. Let's talk about important definitions that you should know for quizzes and exams. And you also need to be able to understand these for when I throw terms around in class. So first of all, microorganisms. What are microorganisms? Well, generally speaking, we have really large organisms and really small organisms. You as a whole are a very large organism, but that's mainly because you're multicellular. Cells in general are very, very small. And most organisms that we consider microorganisms are single-celled organisms. And we can't see those with the naked eye. Um, we really have to use microscopes to see those. And even then, they're still very, very, very small. Okay. Now, in general, microorganisms which are studied in most microbiology labs are going to be bacteria, which is mainly what we're going to be dealing with for the most part. There's also archaeans, fungi, and protists. Now, we don't deal with the latter three, but in general, clinical microbiology labs, which are present in hospitals, they're mainly going to look for organisms that are common as we would say, pathogens that infect humans, okay? And for the most part, the things that are going to infect humans are bacteria, okay? So we're going to study those. And we also don't want contamination from fungi. All right, so in the lab, we're going to have stock cultures, okay? We talked about this in lab. A stock culture is some broth, or in some cases, it's a a plate that has a really large amount of some species, okay? So if we had a stock culture of E. coli, it would just be a broth or a plate that is loaded with only E. coli. And we can take that stock, the bacteria from it, and we can transfer it onto a sterile plate, or in some cases, another sterile broth. And that process by which we physically transfer the bacteria from the stock to a sterile medium, that's called inoculation. And so if you were to inoculate sterile media, you would be transferring bacteria from a stock culture onto that media. Again, we'll cover that on the next slide, the types of media we have. But in general, media, which is the plural or the singular is medium, media is the substance into which or onto which you are transferring or inoculating that bacteria. And so I showed you plates last time. Um, in lab, we had TSA plates, that's one kind of medium, but we can also have broths. And just the media is the substance in which you're transferring the bacteria normally for growth. Okay? Now, after you inoculate bacteria on your particular media, you then incubate. And most bacteria have certain temperatures at which they grow. So if you were to just leave the plate out after you've inoculated, just in the lab at room temperature, it probably wouldn't get much growth. Room temperature is about maybe 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that is in Celsius, but in Celsius degrees, bacteria usually grow around 37 to 39 degrees Celsius. And like I told you in class, that's basically, if you want to think of it this way, it's rainforest temperature. So you go down to the Amazon rainforest, it's very humid, high temperature, that's a good environment for bacteria to grow. And so to get that uh, temperature and that condition, we use an incubator. And that means we incubate the bacteria. And it's just a temporary storage of the bacteria in that environment so that the bacteria will grow. Now, lumping all of that stuff together, we have a term called culturing. Now, culturing is kind of a lump term for the collection of the bacteria and their growth. Okay, so the collecting, that's sort of like the inoculating. Okay, so we have a stock culture. We use the inoculating loop that we talked about and we transfer that bacteria onto a sterile media. And then once we've transferred it, we put it in the incubator, so incubation to grow. Okay, so we're gonna be doing a lot of culturing and then perhaps in the next lab period, we'll be interpreting the results. Okay, now when we inoculate especially, we want to use something called aseptic technique. So another word for aseptic technique is sterile technique. And these are just steps that are required to minimize contamination of your bacteria. And I showed you so, some of these ways and talked about them, but here's kind of a non-exhaustive list of things we can do. I mentioned we want to operate always near the lit 
touch-o-matic burner. So we want that flame going. Remember the flame creates a current and blows potential particles and bacteria in the air up and away from your workspace. Okay? But also remember we want to wash tables before and after lab. We want to wash our hands regularly, especially if we know we came in contact with something. Before we stick our loop in the stock, uh, stock culture, we want to make sure to sterilize it in the, f in the flame. The flame actually sterilizes it by killing anything that's on there. And then when we're operating and opening, opening up the plates and the broths and so forth, we only want to have those open for a short amount of time. The minimum amount of time required to actually do the transfers um, with some uh, quality and efficiency. Okay. And the reason we want to use aseptic technique is so that we can reduce or minimize contamination. And for the purposes of microbiology, contamination is really just when you have unwanted chemicals, or especially in this case, microorganisms like bacteria, that enter your plate or your broth, either the stock or the experimental for that matter, and they basically ruin it. Okay, so we want to minimize contamination. And if you really follow these five main things, among some others that we'll mention, um, you drastically minimize the potential for error from contamination. Okay? Now, in terms of safety, of course, we want to avoid eating and drinking in the lab as much as possible. We really don't want to do that at all. But remember those three things that you really need to do every time um, you come in the lab. We're going to be dealing with open flames from the touch matic burner, so if you have long hair, make sure to tie up your hair before you come into the lab. Also, after you tie up your hair and you come in, you want to make sure to spray down your table and wash it, and then after that, wash your hands. And only then should you ever bring plates or anything to your area of the bench. And then whenever you leave, make sure you, again, wipe your table, wash your hands, and then only then are you able to leave. All right. Also, another thing I didn't mention in class, but don't have backpacks sitting out in the middle of the, the halls or what do you want to call it, the pathway between the desks. We don't want anyone tripping over that stuff. So just be considerate in the lab. Make sure to be clean. Uh, long story short, leave things as they were when you came in. Okay. Now, for the media. Remember, we have agars and we have broths, okay? So, remember, we're inoculating the bacteria onto some medium, okay? And that media can be either solid or liquid. Now, we have three main kinds of solid media, and in general, we call them agars. And the agar name comes from the polysaccharide, uh, which is used to, as the solidifying agent, and that's called agarose. And so, they're called agars. Now, a common agar, and this is actually the one that we... Uh, did for the ubiquity plates today in class, they're called tryptocase soy agars, and that's TSA. And TSA plates are a special kind of agar because in general they contain all of the nutrients that pretty much any bacteria needs to grow. And so these are really just used to grow bacteria of any kind. Um, I don't know of any bacteria off the top of my head that won't be able to grow on these. So these grow pretty much everything and so they're very useful from that perspective. Okay, and agar of any kind, I don't care if it's TSA or if it's um, simon citrate agar, whatever, they're going to be coming in one of three forms. Either they're going to be on a plate, and these plates are actually petri dishes, where we pour it in agar and it's solidified, so plates. They can either be an agar deep, so this is solid, but notice how this, uh, the uh, top of it is actually parallel to the ground or the table. Then we can have an agar slant, which is obviously a slant. Okay, and these will be used for different purposes, but keep in mind and just think about that the surface area for growth on the top of this agar in the slant, the surface area is actually greater than it is for the agar deep, and that's going to be one thing we're going to think about much later in the semester. Liquid media in general is called broth, and this is an example of broth. Again, it's liquid, so this is really the only kind we're going to see. Um, but in some cases, in most cases, actually, the stock cultures will actually be a broth. Okay, and then you'll transfer from the stock onto your sterile media, and you'll, that's how you culture. Okay, make sure on a quiz you're able to identify what something is. Is it a plate? Is it an agar deep, an agar slant, or a broth? Okay, the next thing we're going to cover is the binomial system of nomenclature. Remember that every organism is a member of some species, and with the binomial system, we're going to classify every species with a genus and a species. Okay, so it's a two-name system for every organism. Now, remember, 
on a word processor, which is what you might see right here, you italicize both of the names. Okay? Now, obviously, when we write by hand, which is what we're going to be doing in the class on quizzes, exams, lab reports, um, you can't really italicize very well, so to be absolutely clear what you're doing, you're just going to underline both names, as we see right here. And also, the genus, which is the first name, is always capitalized, and the species, which is the second name, is always lowercased. Okay, so here's, a, here's how you would write Methanobrevibacter smithi on a word processor, but if you're writing it by hand, you would still have the genus capitalized, the species lowercase, but we just underline it, okay? And in some cases, what you may want to do, particularly when you're labeling plates, is you may want to abbreviate the genus. So all we do is we use the first letter of its name. First letter of Methanobrevibacter is M with a period, Smith I, and then just make sure to underline, okay? Here's another example. Again, on a word processor, we would have Escherichia coli italicized, but when we write it by hand, we simply underline it, and again, Escherichia is capitalized, coli is lowercase, and if we want to abbreviate the genus Escherichia, we can just use the first letter E, make sure it's still, still capitalized with a period, and then coli, okay? This is going to be really important whenever we start labeling media. So remember how we talked about in class when we label this media, we want to put our name in terms of its initials first, middle initial, and last, dash the section number. So my name is Kevin James Tokoff, so I put KJT, we're section 11, so dash 011. We want to put the date that we did the inoculation. So today's class was on June the 4th, so 6-4, and it's 2018. We want to put the identity of the medium, because how will someone know what test we're doing? So the media in this case was tryptocase soy agar, so we can abbreviate that as TSA. Always use an abbreviation for the media. And then for the species, we, can, we are welcome to write it out or use the abbreviated form. In this case, we used Escherichia coli, so this was E period coli. Okay. The point is, when you label media, anyone ought to be able to come in, pull out that uh, media, and they should be able to tell what it is in terms of the species and then also the medium on which the inoculation was done. Okay? Let's look at one example here. Let's write a label for Candida albicans, which was inoculated in Vogue's Proskauer broth on January 14th of 2019. Well, here's my initials, Kevin James Tokoff, so KJT. Recall that we are section 11, so I'm going to put 011. What's the date this inoculation was done? 114. Let's put 1 14, and it's 2019. Okay, there's our date. What's the medium? Vogue's Proskauer broth. So why don't we just abbreviate this? VPB. Vogue's Proskauer broth. That's sufficient. And then what about the species? Well, it's Candida albicans. I just would rather abbreviate it C. So abbreviate the genus and then put albicans. And then I just want to make sure to underline that, okay, like that. And if you'd like, you don't have to put the underline through everything. You can leave a space like that, okay? So that would be my label for this situation, okay? And one more thing to conclude this video. Um, we talked about these in class and introduced some of these lab equipment, these pieces of tools. Know these for the quiz and the exam. Make sure you are able to identify these. So you need to be able to identify the inoculating loop and the inoculating needle. Remember, these look similar, but the needle doesn't have that little circle loop at the end. It's just, it's just something that you stab agars with. The inoculating loop actually has the loop, and we're going to be using this one, the loop, a lot more than the needle. Also, we have a touch -o matic burner. This is not a Bunsen burner. I've gotten this on previous quizzes and exams. This is not a Bunsen burner. If you want full credit for this, if I put that out and said, what is it? It's a touch -o matic burner, okay? And remember, it even has touch -o matic written on it, if you look carefully, okay? Also, remember, we have those flint strikers, okay? Um, make sure you put both of these words for, for full credit. Also, remember, we have the incubators in the back of the room. Something I didn't really explicitly pull out, although it should be a little bit obvious, are the safety goggles. Remember, we have two buckets of those on the back table. Um, if I put those out, make sure you can identify those as safety goggles. And then also the eye wash stations that are in the front of the room on each of the three front lab tables. Okay? And one tip for um, identifying these things if you need help, 
or uh, for any subsequent test that we do. Google is your friend. Um, if you do a quick Google search for any of these things, you'll find really good images. In fact, for the quizzes, I actually use Google to pull images off of that. Okay, So Google is your friend. You can use it to look for these tools. And then when we do tests like the Gram stain, acid fast stain, uh, things like that, and then also biochemical tests after the midterm, um, make sure to use Google. It is your friend. If you're doing the lab report and you're confused on the interpretation of result, you can use Google. Okay, that's one very good way to study. And then one more thing before I conclude this video. I've gone in and updated um, some of the things about the general course schedule. Okay, um, when we, initially I had said for weeks one and two we're going to meet Monday through Thursday. That's still true. I'm going to make a slight exception for week three. Week three we are going to meet on Thursday. Okay, so honestly what I should probably do is just say this is week four and I should put weeks one, two, and three. We will be meeting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We still have no lab on week five, okay? Um, I'm also gonna update this. Your midterm exams, the first and the second one, those are both 25 questions, and you'll have two extra credit questions on those. The first midterm exam, I told you I'd look this up. It's actually gonna be on week two, and it's on that Wednesday, okay? So on week two, Wednesday, and that date is going to be the 13th of June. Okay. Your second midterm exam is going to be on week three on Thursday. That's why I had to amend this. Um, so week three, we are meeting on Thursday. That's going to be your second midterm, so week three, and that date is the 21st of June, 6-21-2018. Your practicum, which is where we identify the unknown bacteria, that's all of week four, and then we have nothing on week five. Okay, so make sure you study this stuff. I'm going to be posting this updated PowerPoint on Canvas as soon as Canvas is updated. All right, thank you, and join us in exercise two.